Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're going to be learning about something really, really cool. We're going to be talking about volumes, and uh, I found a nice little tutorial that I followed, and it gave it, it gave you a nice result, which is the thumbnail that you saw. And I want to share it with you, because I think it's, it's really fun, and it's going to allow me to teach you a little bit about volumes. Whoop. There we go. <laughs> so, um, first of all, before we, we jump onto the actual tutorial itself, I just want to do a quick overview about the substance nodes. There's a lot of people that still don't know about the substance node. So, uh, in the newest Maya versions, there is a substance plugin. Everyone should know what substance is. This this amazing software to create textures. And it has a nice little um, element that you can use to import an SVSR file, which is a substance archive. Um, like any of these guys right here, any of these elements. This is from Substance Source, but you can get them from Substance Share. If you get an SVSR, you can import it directly, and it will create all of the like connections for you without you to without the need for you to worry. So very simple way to do it. You just go here into the Hypershade. You press a tab, and you write Substance, and it's just third one, Substance Texture. As you can see, it has a place to the texture in case we want to tile it, and then we have this Substance node right here. We're gonna load the Substance. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go to my source images, and it's this wood cedar that I'm using. I'm going to hit open. And down here, very important, uh, we need to set up the size. Uh, right now, I think I'm going to go with 1K. You're going to see why. And I'm going to select Arnold, and I'm going to say create workflow. Sorry, uh, create network. There we go. So what will happen is it will automatically give me my uh, roughness channel, color channel, diffuse channel, like all of the channels that we normally use are going to be here. Even even the displacement channels. You can see we have our height map here. We have our EXR for the height map, and uh, and then this is getting into this. Like everything is connected. Like you don't have to do anything. It's it's ready to go. Well, that's a lot. You do have to do a couple of things. So let's um, for, first things first. Let's make sure that this is working. So I'm going to go here, right click, assign existing material, and it's this AI standard surface. I can click number six, and that's what I'm going to get. Now, let's say I want to like tile this thing twice, right? Because it's a, it's a little bit small right now for the size that's supposed to be like a table. So I'm just going to go here to repeat UVs. I'm going to say two and two. And again, this is just uh, like inputting a 1024 um, like texture size. So that's quite optimized. And then when we duplicate or when we um, no, tile this two times, it's like getting a um, a 2K texture map, which is uh, four times the resolution. That's a very, that's also a very like common mistake people make. They think that a 1K map and a 2K map, it's it's twice the size. It's not twice the size, it's four times the, the size. Because if you think about it, we go from 1K to four 1Ks, right? So 1K here, 1K here, 1K here, and 1K here. That's what the 2K is. So when you jump from 2K to 4K, you're not getting double the resolution. It's four times the resolution because you, you get like two little squares and just it's simple math, but it can get a little bit uh, complicated sometimes. So I'm going to go here into Arnold. Let's do a lights, sky down light. And then we're just going to grab like any HDR that we've used before. I think I had one from uh, like an... Like an um, I want one like um, indoors, indoors. That's the word that I was looking for. I want an indoors here, the decor shop. Let's use the decor shop. There we go. Uh, let's find our camera. So we're going to go rendering, camera, create a new camera, panels, look through selected, and let's get a nice little like, shot right here. So something like this. This is going to eventually be our final shot. You probably saw something similar to this on the, on the uh, thumbnail. So now, uh, the problem is, if I were to hit render, you might think, oh, everything is ready, we can just hit render, and that's it. Yes and no. The problem is, we do have displacement turned on, so what might happen here is that since we have displacement turned on, and we have not changed the properties of the mesh to be displaced, we might not get the result that we want. So it's not looking bad. It's not. I wouldn't say this is looking bad, but you can definitely tell that... Um, there's a couple of like things to do. Like for instance, the normal map, it's a little bit too intense, right? So even the displacement map, I think it's a little bit too intense. And I'm not seeing that much displacement. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go into Arnold section and I'm gonna say subdivision. I'm gonna change this to Catmull Clark and let's give it like three or four subdivisions. And then on the hyper shade, I'm gonna go to the displacement shader and we can change the scale. Let's say like 0.1. Usually you want you don't wanna go like super, super high uh, for this kind of things. So now we render. And as you can see, that wood looks a little bit better. A little bit better. It still feels like weird. It's not bad again, but it feels weird. Now, one of the cool things is at any point we can go here to the to the main like substance node and we can change the parameters. So down here, it's like if you were in substance, you can change the height range, you can change the height position. Uh, for instance, the height range, height range is like the intensity of the height map. So I'm gonna say 0.1. 
uh, so that should give me like way less uh, intensity. Same for the normal intensity. I'm going to say 0.1 and the normal format should be OpenGL. That's why it seems like the groups are going up uh, instead of down. Let's render now. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. So now it looks like the groups are going in uh, because the normal map should be OpenGL. Uh, now I can see that the displacement is trying to do its thing, but it's not really giving me the nicest result. So to be honest, this, for this kind of surfaces, since it's a very flat surface, we don't need it. We can go here to the substance node again and just turn off the uh, height, the height node, and that will just like destroy the, the connection and, and that's it. So now we render, we're gonna have more of a, like a soft, nice table. There we go. So now let's talk about the volumes. Um, we're gonna be doing this marbles, uh, this very cool marbles. And uh, in order to create this like depth to the whole thing, we need to create uh, something called a volume. Now, uh, if anyone has seen a marble before, and that's why I, I, when I found this uh, tutorial, I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. This is not mine, of course. Um, as I've, it's from the official Arnold um, like uh, page. Um, is if anyone has seen like a, like a marble toy like this guys right here, we know that there's depth to them, right? Like there's there's like ink or, or oils inside of the glass and that makes it look like with depth. It's not just like a sphere painted with a with a, with a layer. It's, it's It actually has depth to it, right? So um, that we're gonna be using the volume to generate that depth. But first let's create the marble very easily. I'm just gonna start with a sphere. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, let's freeze the transformations. Right click, I'm gonna assign a new material. I'm gonna assign a basic Arnold AI standard surface. Let's uh, delete history and I'm just gonna call this M marble. There we go. Now what we're gonna do, here's the, here's the shader. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a file texture, just a traditional file texture. Oh. So just file texture. And on this file texture, I'm gonna load an image. Now I got myself a couple of images here. I was trying like to see which one looked the best, and I want to try this one with like a, like a Jupiter or like Mars. You can use anything. Uh, they recommended you use something that has a lot of uh, contrast to it, so like oil and paint. Uh, so for instance, I, I've used this one uh, and it works quite nice. It is important that it's stylable, so that's why I'm using uh, like this sort of guys right here, like the Jupiter or the Mars. So let's give it a go with like Mars. Let's see how Mars looks. So. Um, this object will be glass, right? Like the marble is made out of glass. So we need to turn off the color because glass has no color. The color is in the transmission. We're gonna turn the roughness all the way down as well so that it's super shiny. And on the transmission, we're gonna, tr we're gonna turn the transmission all the way up. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, plug this in. In the tutorial, they use a UB uh, projection. UB projection, this one right here. So I'm gonna bring this projection color here. I'm gonna change the projection to spherical projection. And now we're gonna plug this spherical projection into the transmission color and the transmission scatter, okay? And we're gonna change the depth. Well, let's, let's do a quick render because it's, it's very important for me to, to explain this to you so that you guys understand what's going on. So right now, this is what we have, right? Like it, it's, it's just, it just looked like a, like a red sphere because we're getting like the sort of like a red color from Mars. Uh, but there's a lot of texture. If you guys remember from, from the original texture from Mars, uh, like this one right here, we, de we do have a lot of information. So the trick here is using this depth thing. So if I start increasing the depth, let's say like depth two, what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna click this button to save the image, is we're now gonna be going, and, and we're gonna be adding, as the name implies, depth to the whole thing. So the interesting thing here is, the darker areas will be deeper, right? Like it, it now looks like there's like a mass or something here inside of the element and the, and the clearer or wider areas are gonna be like closer to the surface. So, so it adds this sort of effect and we can change this even more. Like if we go for like a depth of five, now what's gonna happen is as you can see, it's gonna look a little bit clearer, 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 right? So yeah, I mean, this already looks quite nice. Like just changing those parameters already gives us this very, very cool effect. Um, but we're gonna make something even better. So this is gonna be my, it's gonna be the glass sphere. There we go. Uh, one cool thing that they uh, also recommend on the tutorial is quite nice here on the, uh, on the projection, you can play around with the U angle and the V angle. And what that thing will do is it will distort the image. So instead of having a, like the, whoop, like the normal image, it will start like rotating the whole thing. Let me let me see if I can show it to you here. So if we push like the U angle and the B angle, there we go. See how the, the image like gets distorted. So 
So even though we were using the original like Mars thing, now we got like a really like crazy effect on the on the element. I don't want. I actually like the the Mars effect. It's kind of like a Mars marble. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Now, volume. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna duplicate this and then I turn the first one off, and I'm gonna call this volume sphere. Volume is another property that we have. I'm gonna assign the basic material to this one, so it's just like a gray sphere. Volume is a property that we have inside of Arnold that allows us to render, well, as the name implies, a volume, because we're usually surfaces are either uh, reflective, they just like get the bounce of the light and go away, or refractive, like the glass where the, the light goes through the element, and finally, like volume, like, like clouds, um, uh, smoke, fire, those things are supposed to be rendered as volume. So we're not going to be using, whenever you, we take a look at the, at the shaders here, we're not going to be using this upper surface shader thing. We're going to be using something else, something a little bit different. So the way this works is I'm going to go here to the hypershade. I'm going to go to Arnold and I'm going to go to shaders. And there's one called AI standard volume. And that's as uh, in a very similar fashion to the standard uh, surface. This is a standard volume. If we map it, you're going to see Actually, I'm not seeing it right now, but we will get this thing plugged into a, a volume shader. So the only thing I need to do here is I need to whoop, grab this guy, right click. I'm going to sign existing material AI standard volume. So now it has no, no, no shader, right? Like it has the standard volume on the volume shader, but it doesn't have any material, which is fine because we don't want to render that as a material. We want to render it as a volume. Now, let's see what we get. If we render right now, we're not getting anything. Technically, we should be able to, to just give it like a standard surface or something. Um, but I'm going to keep it like this because now what we can do is we can go here to the volume and there's a couple of things that we can do. We can change the scatter and we can change the density. No, I'm not, well, I'm not seeing anything. Let me assign a basic standard surface first or just new material, Arnold, a standard surface. And now I'm going to assign the volume. That's really weird. Anyway, don't worry. What we're going to do, and that's the, the next part of the of the tutorial, is we're going to grab uh, the marble surface and this like AI standard volume, which is the new one, uh, this one, AI standard volume one. So we grab the marble and the AI standard volume, and we're going to map them out. And what I want to do is I want to bring this UV projection into two places here. I want to bring it into the scatter color. Okay. And I want to bring it into the scatter weight like this. So we're going to plug this in into the scatter color and the scatter weight. So now what we should see here, hmm, that's really weird. Give me one second. Okay, so I managed to find the culprit. Sorry about that. Uh, there was just one little thing. It's always one little thing with like one little checkbox or something that we forget to, to add. So um, the thing that I forgot to add is this little sphere right here. It's fine that it looks green. That like That's totally normal. But you need to go into the object itself. And in a very similar way to how we did the subdivision, where we modified the subdivisions here to cut the Clark and all that stuff, there's another option called volume attributes. And the step size is what tells the thing to like actually render volume. Now, the lower the step size will be will get you that like the nicer effect, but it will also increase render time. So if I were to go like 0 0.01, which is like really, really low, this thing is going to look amazing. It's going to look a lot, lot better. Uh, but it's of course going to take like almost like 10 times or double the amount of uh, as long. Now, as you can see, the volume right here, this is rendering as a volume. We can see that it's, it's kind of like a little smoke ball and it's taking the colors to kind of like indicate where the color of the smoke is going to be, the different like tones of the of the Mars sphere. Now, there's a couple of things that we can change on the volume shader, which is the ones that I mentioned here. You don't need to connect this to the weight. Uh, that was my bad as well. It's on the color, only the color. And the weight is going to be the one that we're going to be using to um, to modify things. So here on the uh, on the weight of the of the scatter, let me move this thing to the side. So let's do right now we have a weight of uh, one. So let's stop. And if we bring this to like 0.4 and we render, it's going to look like a lot less dense or, or more denser in this case, just denser. So in this case, I do want to go weight all the way up. So that it's like sort of like fluffy all the way around. And then right here on the transparent, we can play around with the with the weight as well. And we can play around with the depth. So both of them will change the way that does a little like smoky, smoky thing um, makes the whole thing look. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, that's the that's the sort of like volume. So again, we're taking the colors from the from the original like image from the Mars image, and we're kind of like bringing the bringing bringing them in into the element. So they're they're all the way around. 
Now we're going to go back to the sphere. We're going to bring it out. And if we render, what we're going to get is we're going to get this really, really cool effect where the uh, the glass sphere will contain like different like tones and effects inside of it. Now, I think this image might not be the best one. You can see that it's a, it's a little bit weird. So let me show you. This is one of the, of the cool tricks. If we have this right here, we just need to change the image. I know that the blue one works very, very nicely. So I'm just going to use the blue one. And there we go. So now we have this nice little blue uh, sphere. And again, we can change uh, and play around with all of the values that we've modified before to get like a nicer effect. So for instance, if I want less uh, scatter or less density here on the weight, let's bring the weight down. It's, that's going to give me a more like solid effect for the, for the model. But if I want like a super fluffy one, we bring this up and look at that. Very nice cluster clear element with again with this colors and and elements inside of it we can change the depth this is going to darken it a little bit or you can increase it which is going to make it like super super light um here as well like the scatter depth we can play around with this and yeah it's a it's a i think it's a fun project everyone should be able to do it and uh but now let's do like one more thing let's let's change the render just a little bit so we can get something something really cool out of this so i'm gonna group both of them because it's, it's two elements, as you as you guys uh, can see here. I'm going to center the pivot point, and I'm going to duplicate them, the group, like a couple of times. Let's place a couple of one, like a little bit of out of focus, and then one over here. And now I'm going to like randomly grab a couple of them, and then just like rotate them some way and then grab other couple of them and rotate them and then just grab another one. I could just be like a little bit random about this and, and we should get some nice, nice variation. So now we render, we're going to have our very nice, uh, like collection of marbles, uh, all the way around in the, in our table. Uh, now to make this thing, this things look even better, uh, adding another source of light will be, will be pretty cool. So what if we added one very nice light? Someone in the comments asked for like artistic light. The secret to lighting guys, um, it's, it's lights of course, and it's knowing where to place the lights and where to place your shadows, right? So in this case, at the take right here, I would like my light to be coming from this area, like up so that the shadows are going like back. And that's, that gives me a little bit more depth to the whole image. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. Uh, let's go into the options. Let's change the exposure quite high to like a 10. There we go. You can see now we see the reflection. I, I'm not loving the reflection right there. So I'm going to move it. So the reflection is on the side of the of the spheres. One thing we can do, we can maybe lower the spread. So it's only focusing the marbles and nothing else. It's kind of like using a spotlight. There we go. Uh, definitely the exposure is a little bit too much. So let's Let's bring it down. We can use a little bit of color temperature. Let's go warm. Uh, we can bring the the resolution of the or the the exposure of the HDR a little bit lower, so like a minus one. That way we're gonna have a little bit more contrast. Now nah, I kind of like the I kind of like the shininess that we had on the on the HDR. So let's go zero again. And now I'm gonna grab this guy, the light. Duplicate it again and move it back right there. So that's going to be like a, like a rim light. As you can see, it's going to be coming from this part right here. Now, of course, since these are glasses or since this is glass, we're not going to have as many shadows. But there's one thing that we need to change. There's a lot of glass right now. And whenever we have a lot of glass, there's a nice little setting down here, which is called the ray depth, which is how far a ray of the like the render goes through the objects to analyze all of the surfaces. And right now we only have eight. So there's only eight layers and we need way, way more. So I'm going to bring this to like 20. I'm going to change the diffuse to like 10 and the specular to 10. And even the volume, I'm going to say like five or something. This is, of course, is going to increase the render time. But as you can see, now everything's going to look a lot nicer. We even get like more light into the elements because the light is actually going through the, the objects and it's projecting uh, it into the into the environment. You can see it's definitely taking way, way longer. Here might be a good idea first. Let, let me save real quick before anything, anything bad happens. Let's call this marbles. And we're going to try and use our GPU. There we go. 
So remember, GPU only works if you have an NVIDIA GPU. So don't try to do it if you have an AMD or other things because uh, it uses the CUDA core technology from NVIDIA to, to make this thing work a little bit better. I'm going to pause real quick, guys. I'm going to keep tweaking the render just a little bit, and then I'll show you the final result. Yeah, so with GPU, the render is taking a little bit longer. I think it's not as clean, and, and that's because usually glass and stuff like that works a little bit better with CPU, even if it takes a little bit longer. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, one last thing I want to do before I render the full uh, render, um, and uh, don't worry, I'll show you to you guys. I know that sometimes I upload the, the thumbnails and there's no way to see the renders. Uh, I'll show you this time. I'm going to go to my camera. I'm going to say panels, look through selected. Now I want to focus on this um, like sphere right there. I know that this is 13.9 units away. So we're going to use a little bit of, uh, of um, depth of field. I'm going to go into the options of the camera, Arnold options, and we're going to select this option called enable depth of field. The focus distance is going to be 13. Did they say 13? Yeah, 13.9. That's fine. And then on the aperture size, I'm going to do something small, like 0.1, because this is a really small scene. So I'm not expecting this to... Like, I don't need, like, a super huge value to start seeing some of the blurriness of the effect. So let's take a look at it. Yeah, I can already see that's going to be, like, quite blurry, like, up there. Maybe the samples are a little bit too too big, right? So um, let me stop this. There we go. So the render was still going, uh, but since I activated our denoiser imager, as you can see here, we get a very, very nice effect. Now, it's still noisy, and the, and the reason why it's noisy is because volumes are always complicated. Like, you need a lot of computational power to get them uh, through to make sure that we get this very nice depth and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is it, guys. This is our final image. Hope you liked it. I know this was a little bit of a weird uh, tutorial, like, out of the blue, Arnold. But I, f I found the, the information. I thought it was going to be uh, cool to share it with you. Tomorrow, we're going to start with another cute little project. Um, I hope you guys are going to like it. Well, it's not cute. It's going to be, like, a really badass project. It's going to be a simple one. It's going to be a little bit of ZBrush. We're going to do texturing and stuff. Uh, but yeah, make sure to come back tomorrow to see more 3D content. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. Uh, the portfolios, don't forget, the portfolios are open. So the link's going to be down here in the video. I forgot to put it on the last video. Someone was asking for it. It's going to be here, my friend. Uh, and if not, you can go back to the, to the like, a couple of the older videos from, like, Saturday and, and Sunday, and it's there as well. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.